Westinghouse generator. IGEN 4500. Remote start. And I think I'm having the same problem that several others seem to be having on YouTube. Sorry about my hand, guys. I just got out of surgery yesterday. Uh, but I think I can manage this. Uh, I took that off so I can show you what's going on here. But screwdriver and point to it you might be able to see it a little better okay let that focus in all right that's the automatic choke box right there with the stepper motors inside and when I take it all apart I'll show it to you and then that little black thing right there is is the choke lever that swings out this way and then swings back so when it starts, I guess uh, the on position is there. It's, it's hard to see in the camera, but it's sticking out towards me. And the only reason I'm making this video is because I watched a hundred of these things and nobody showed how to uh, replace the stepper motors, which, which is the, what's wrong with mine. So that's the, that's the choke lever right there. So that, when it starts, it's supposed to go back and that stepper motor controls it after that. And, and then that's the, I guess, the total off position right there when it's warmed up and running. Because it runs perfect in that position, but you have to take off this side panel to get to it. And that's a pain in the butt and the remote control doesn't work. So guys, I'm here to tell you, I called up Westinghouse directly and spoke to a guy's name's Colbert, and I think I have that right. I'll, I'll check to make sure, but what a godsend, man. He, I walked him through what I'd done, and once once I take all the covers off, <clears throat> I'm going to break this thing down. <coughs> Whoa, excuse me. I'm going to take all the panels off, because everybody else that I was watching, you know, they don't do a screw over here on this side of it, which is where the clamp that connects that connector, that uh, stepper motor connects to. Uh, it connects to this face plate right here, uh, down here. So, when, and they, they take off a couple of bolts, bend that plastic piece out and connect it with their fingers. And I mean, they do a really good job showing it, but I mean, it's just as easy to take the whole daggone cover off of it so you can see everything and kind of work yourself around it. They sent me the stepper motors in the mail after getting done talking to this, this guy at Westinghouse who was phenomenal. And this is the packet that I got. So that's the stepper motor that controls the, the choke. See, it sets like this in that black box and that little silver arm sticks down through the bottom is, is what you're looking at that the, you know, that the, the maneuvering pieces connect to. That's a little uh, spring. I had to call him and ask him where that went. I have no idea. I, when I took mine apart, I heard it fling off, and I was like, wow, where did that come from? And I couldn't figure it out, but uh, they sent, they even sent me a picture of where that goes. So, again, I'm going to be working on that, and uh, I'll try to make a YouTube video that helps everybody out when they have this issue. And I'll retrace the, the things that they told me to check. And the first thing they tell you to check is the stepper motor connector wire, or the, the choke control connector wire. And that's the one that I was telling you um, that it it comes out on the back side right here, right there, that wire right there. And it goes down and loops around, and goes all the way to the other side, and then plugs in. Now, now, what Westinghouse has done is they've started putting zip ties at that connector so that it won't come undone during shipping. And I wish that was the problem with mine, but... I checked all the connectors and then called Westinghouse and they said, yeah, it sounds like you got a bad stepper motor. Bloop, sent it to me, had it in a week. So uh, I'm going to try to make a video and show you how to fix it. I think a 10 millimeter kind of works for everything, but uh, that and a Phillips. Okay. 10 millimeter. That's it. Nice and snug. All right, so we'll leave that standing up so I can find it easier because nothing in that is in order.
All right, guys, let me get at it. All right, guys, just a quick update. I didn't want to film a worn arm guy taking out screws, but took out those screws right there. Just real quick, took out all, all these little screws underneath the handle, along the top, along, under the handle, along the top, and then you don't, you, obviously you don't have to take them off for this, uh, for this panel, uh, or maybe you do, I don't know. Yeah, you do. I don't know. No, you don't. Sorry. Uh, that's where I started looking at it and fixing everything, but took them all off the sides here. Uh, those are those 10 millimeters down there, and you can see the little, uh, the little washers that they, you know, they're in place that they screw through. So those are the different bolts that I showed you. And then took them off back here. And uh, I got one left right there and these on this side. And this is the side that is the side that you really need to take off because if you were fixing that loose wire, that's where it would be. I'll, uh, I'm going to cut this off, take off those last couple remaining screws and stuff. And then once I start taking off the panels, I'll uh, bring you back. Okay, stand by. So I'll give you the walk around on this. I pulled this out and just kind of leveled it down a little bit so that I could see all the way around it. But now that you know where we're working at, it goes down and it connects that uh, problem that everybody was saying to check first is that connection. Gosh, I got so much junk in my shit. Is it's that connection down there. So what they've done to rectify that is they they put a little zip tie around it and then everything works perfect. But I just couldn't I checked all my connections and everything was was in there pretty good. Uh, let me see if I can straighten this up a little bit. But that's where it goes. So there it comes back up and goes into the stepper motor box right here. And then of course there's your choke. That should be the, the vein of everybody's problem. And I gotta give it to Westinghouse, man. They've come through for me, sent me a replacement part. And you know, if I guess if you were able to find, and there's, all the YouTube videos that I saw are, are all pertaining to that connection down there on the on the other side over there where I showed. I'm gonna start taking uh, this off, and this this requires patience. This little stepper motor carburetor choke thing. Uh, it just does. This cap pops off. All right, guys. While the light is on, see that. Oh, my hand's blocking it. See that screw back there? And then there's one. That's not it. It's right behind it. And that's where that little Phillips fits in there. So this one, this one back there, you can, you can fit. I'm oh, sorry. This is... Spin that one out. All right. And this one. And use this little one. And it literally took one second. I turned it one more half turn and it popped off. All right. So. Those are the screws. You can see them better from underneath, maybe. One of them is in that plastic 
thing right there behind my finger. And just as the same as that one, it goes over that. So when it fits over that, it slides down it and uh, goes. But all right, next, it looks like they gave us this plastic part here and a spring and this motor. So let's take this motor off and get to it. Use another little Phillips, get that off, and we'll open up the new package and see what's what. I'm gonna set you right here because we're gonna be looking at this. This is, this is where that stepper motor went. This is the new one that they sent. All right, guys, I just got this, I just put this stepper motor back on there and I'm just gonna screw it back together. In, in those little holes. Just let me put these little screws back in it. And we'll see how this works out. The little screws didn't come in the uh, in the new tool, the, the new parts bag. So make sure you keep track of those little things. Snug them down until I get them both lined up. You can okay, and then I undid that. metal loop de do thing back there. See it back there? That I snaked that wire through it. It's very easy. Just have to bend it out of the way. See it's back there? All right. And then that's what runs down the other side and plugs into that plug and we'll zip tie that when we put that back on. All right, guys, continuing on with this video, I put those little uh, stepper motor connectors uh, on there and that's where those springs go in there can you see them those little nipples so I put those in there and then the stepper motor once you you know you just line it up over the screw holes and everything and those stepper motor um, brass prongs that you see right there will just go right down in the in the holes here uh, these have to be lined up. This one has a spring on it over here that's always in that position. So you just have to make sure that the stepper motor is aligned. But this one will wiggle the choke. Uh, the, the tension comes from in here. So I found it easier just to stick it wide open, uh, you know, in this position. And it lines up and then all three of those holes will, from the uh, stepper motor bracket will fit over... Um, you know, their screw holes. And then it'll lock it down. You put the three screws back in it. All right, let's uh, put that, drop that stepper motor down on and uh, we'll tighten it back up. Okay, guys, uh, got those three screws back in it. That plate's back on. Uh, as you can see, it sits down on that carburetor. Uh, there's the uh, automatic choke. Uh, I'm gonna, bend that little metal thing back around the wires and hold them in place and uh, clip the other end in and put a zip tie in. So let's do that. Okay guys, here's that new wire from the stepper motor coming down. I just put it back through that little uh, wire holder there, just a little metal bend and it comes down and it connects into that connection port right there so we just uh, put that in it snapped in real nice uh everything's in there pretty tight i said i was going to zip tie it but i can't find any uh small wire ties like that but 
if I have a problem with it in the future, I'll certainly do that. Let's uh, spin this around, kind of put the panels back in place. I'm going to do a test start on it real quick and see what happens. All right, so there's the, the choke. And that's, I guess that's off because when it got stuck in the on position, it was, it was, uh, it was way over here. So I'm going to, I'm going to start it off right there. Turn the gas on, powers on, and uh, I'll push the button and see what that, see what that little starter motor does now. We're watching that choke right there to see if it works. Yeah, let me put that hose back on. You never know. Oh, here it goes back. Not too much light. Yeah, that's better, isn't it? All right, guys, that's what we're watching right there. We'll push the start button.